In this video I want to show you how to configure VS Code Editor in a really minimalistic way. As you can see here I have a file tree, just a single file here, so no tabs, no additional symbols, highlighting or unnecessary distractions. A lot of people simply install VS Code, they don't configure anything, at maximum they install several plugins and this is it. But actually by default VS Code is quite bloated with features, yes obviously a lot of them are useful, but it is going more in the direction of fully blown IDE. If you want to focus on the code specifically, you might want to disable lots of stuff to make it look cleaner and easier to read. This is why I really prefer a minimalistic view of my editor when I'm working. So how to achieve such result? First of all, let's look on the extensions that I have. As you can see here, I have just 5 plugins installed, which is enough for me. First of all is the Angular language server. As I am using Angular quite a lot, this is a nice package, which brings LSP support to VS Code. Secondly is custom CSS and JavaScript loader. If you want some custom configuration that you want to do additionally or hide some elements, you certainly need this plugin, because you can simply change some elements by updating its CSS classes. If you don't plan to override anything, you don't need this plugin. Next is ESLint, obviously we want to see warnings from ESLint regarding problems with our code. The next one is Groovebox theme, this is the theme that you can see on the screen, and this is what I am using in all my videos. The next one is Prettier, which prettifies the code every single time when I am typing something and I am hitting save. This is really nice because it allows me to focus on the code and not spend time on intendation. And the last one is Subtle Match Brackets. This is exactly this underline on the brackets that you can see. It is really comfortable to see brackets like this and not like default brackets that you can see in VS Code because it looks more minimalistic. Now we must talk about backup and using our settings. Just imagine that you configured your VS Code, then you are getting a new computer and you need to set up it again. You forgot half of your settings and then it is difficult to restore them. Obviously this is not a way to go, there are different solutions to this problem. For example inside code, preferences, settings, as you can see on the top there is backup and sync settings. You can click here and select what you want to backup, then you create an account, sign into it and it will be backed up for you. This is an easy solution, especially when you are a beginner. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. Another solution would be to backup specific files and write in your own scripts to restore them if this is part of your workflow, like for example dot .files. So essentially you can see inside .vs code extensions, which extensions are installed, and if you are looking for settings, they are living inside library application support code user setting JSON, which essentially means by backupping this file, you can always restore it on your new machine and use as intended. What I did now here, I removed all my settings from the editor and resetted it to default state. So the goal now is to configure my settings and show you exactly which options I am using and why. So our first step is to install all necessary plugins. So first of all let's look for Prettier in extensions, then let's install ESLint, then Groovebox theme, and I want to select here dark medium, and subtle match brackets. And the last one here is Angular Language Server. As it is much easier to configure the whole editor inside JSON, I will write all keys there. And in order to do that, you can simply open this file in library application support code user settings JSON and edit it, even inside code itself. As you can see here, I opened the settings JSON file inside VS Code, and here is the path its library application support code user settings JSON. And we have here a JSON with just a single key, workbench color theme, Groovebox dark medium. It was set when we installed our Groovebox plugin and selected there this theme. Now the next key that I want to provide here is window dot zoom level, and here I want to provide three. By default it is zero, and as you can see it makes your editor bigger. 
Obviously you can tune it for yourself, but I find this zoom level is really comfortable for me. What we want next is that prettier formats on save all our files. This is why here we must write editor dot format on save. As you can see by default it is false, we must provide here true. But it is not enough, we also want to say for which files pretty must be called. This is why here we must provide an extension, it is HTML. And here we have an object with field editor dot default formatter. And here we are providing pretty VS code. Now we can copy paste this several times, because I want to do exactly the same for the TypeScript, for CSS, for JSON, for JavaScript, and for JavaScript with React. So with this we finished configuring our Prettier. The next thing that I don't want to see is these breadcrumbs on the top, because they just take the space and typically I know which file I am editing. So here breadcrumbs enabled I want to put in false. Also I want to disable seeing white spaces in our code. This is why here editor render white space. As you can see default value is selection, I want to put here none. After this I want to remove a status bar, because it is completely useless for me. I don't really need to know on what line I am, or that I have 4 spaces indentation. This is why workbench dot status bar visible, and here we can provide false. As you can see it already looks much cleaner. The next one is the font, and I really prefer the default macOS font, which is Monaco. This is why here editor dot font family, and I want to put here Monaco on the first place. And as you can see our font is applied. I also don't want to see this activity bar on the left, so let's disable that. So workbench, activity bar location, and let's select here hidden. And you might say, ok, but how I can switch between different properties of activity bar? And you just need to learn some hotkeys, so you can quickly open the debug with command shift D or your file tree with command shift E. Also I want two spaces indentation and not four how it is by default, so editor dot tab size will be two spaces. I also don't like long lines of code, this is why I want to enable wrap. So editor word wrap and here let's select on. Also as you can see on the right we see scrolls, this is one part of the problem, but also these lines, which are not helpful for me. So let's disable it with editor hide cursor in overview ruler, and I want to provide here true. As you can see here I opened the project on the left, so we can see how we are tuning it. The next thing that I want to do is remove this close button. And actually it depends on your workflow, but I don't really like to have lots of open tabs which are hanging there, and then you can't really know which one you need. This is why it is much easier for me to have just a single tab which is never closed, and then I can simply switch between files. This is why here what I want to do is first of all disable that cross, so it will be workbench, editor, tab action close visibility, and we want to set it to false. And as you can see our close button disappeared. Also as you can see inside file tree some of the files are highlighted when they have some problems. And additionally to that they will be highlighted when you modified them and your file is tracked in git for example. I don't really want that, this is why let's disable it with explorer, dot decorations, colors and here will be false. As you can see now all our files are white. Another issue which is super annoying for me is not showing nested folders. As you can see here I have source and then foo bar and essentially foo folder is empty. This is why we don't get this nesting. We see here foo slash bar and not nested folders. I don't want that. This is why explorer compact folders and here I want to set it to false. As you can see now we have a nice default nesting with source foo and bar. As I'm using git from the console and not from the VS code itself, I prefer to disable everything related to the git inside VS code. So first of all let's remove all decoration symbols of git with git decoration enabled and we're setting it to false. Another feature that I don't really like is different colors of brackets in the code. This is why let's disable this feature. So editor, bracket pair colorization, enabled, and here I want to put false. As you can see now all my brackets are grey. And additionally to that we don't want to highlight the active pair, because we are using an additional plugin which highlights pairs with underline. This is why editor guides 
Highlight Active Bracket Pair, let's set it to false. And one more here is our Editor Guides, Bracket Pairs Horizontal we also want to set to false. As you can see by default VS Code highlights the active line with this grayish background. I don't want that, I always know at what line I am, so editor dot render line highlight and let's set it to none. We also don't want to see any scroll bars, both horizontal and vertical, so let's disable them. It will be editor scroll bar dot horizontal, it will be hidden and the same for vertical, so editor scroll bar vertical hidden. Obviously we can still scroll but we don't really need to see the scroll bar. Another feature that I don't use is folding, these are these arrows on the left which allows you to fold your code. So let's disable that with editor show folding controls and let's set it to never. As you can see now we don't have any controls and it does not pollute our space. I also don't want to see any symbols of git here on the left, this is why I can disable it, so editor glyph margin false. As we disabled folding controls, it makes a lot of sense to disable folding fully. This is why editor folding we can set to false. The next thing that I want to disable are these buttons on the top, because if I want to do some splits, I will do it with hotkeys and not with these buttons. This is why here workbench, layout control enabled and let's set it to false. I also don't want to see here on the top the title. This is why we can disable it by providing an empty title. So window title can be just a space. Also as you can see by default your cursor inside VS Code blinks and this is really irritating. So let's write here editor cursor blinking and let's select here solid. Another cool thing that I really like to use is smooth animation of the scrolling. So we can set here editor cursor smooth carrot animation on. And now when I'm scrolling it is really a smooth movement. Now we're coming to the fun part, I don't want to see all these tabs at all, I just want to see a single tab. This is why here I want to provide workbench, editor, show tabs and here will be single. As you can see there is just a single tab, no other tabs, but when I'm selecting another file we can see the title here on the top. If you want to jump to some other file you can always hit command P and this is the file which is opened for you now and here is the previous file so you can easily jump to it. One more thing that I'm not using is this command center, if I use it then I will use a hotkey, so window.commandcenter must be false. Also here as you can see by default when we hover on the word which exists in the whole file it will highlight this word everywhere. This is really confusing for me, this is why I want to disable it. It's editor.occurrence-highlight and let's set it to off. Now when we're hovering on editor nothing happens because we disabled this behavior. One more thing that we need to disable is default matching brackets because we're using a plugin for that. This is why editor match brackets must be never. Another thing which is totally useless is this minimap on the right, we don't want to see that. So editor minimap enabled and let's set it to false. And as I already said, I don't want to see any git symbols inside editor. This is why here let's provide a cm div decoration gutter pattern and it must be an object. And here I want to put modified false. Also I want to remove all git decorations, so scm div decoration should be none. And all git actions should also be disabled, this is why scm div decoration gutter action is set to none. And the last option that I want is when I'm jumping between different windows. For example if I was in VS Code and I jump to Chrome, what I want to do is to save my file. In this case I am always sure that the file is saved and no changes are lost. This is why here let's set files.autosave and let's select here on window change. And the last thing that we can do here on the left we can click right button and hide outline and timeline because I'm not using them also. So this is how minimal my editor is looking when I'm writing code. And if you just want to apply my config but don't want to retype it yourself, I will link at the description box below this config that we just created. VS Code is a really nice and popular editor, but if you want to learn how to configure some another editor or what are the benefits of it, make sure to check this video where I am setting up from scratch my NeoVim editor.